Hello there, welcome to Watson's Daily TV. I'm Peter Watson and I'm here with my take on two major topics in this morning's business news distilled for you in three minutes. This is a cut down version of my weekday newsletter, Watson's Daily, in which I usually comment on a number of companies and themes. Can I beat the buzzer? Today, I'm going to talk about IKEA and Foxconn. IKEA announced today uh, another stage in its transformation as it announced that it would be cutting over 7,000 jobs worldwide as well as ploughing more money into its online business, existing outlets and new smaller town centre stores. The company employs 160,000 staff and although 7,000 jobs are to be lost now, the company believes that 11,500 jobs will be created as it rolls out its smaller store format over the next two years. I think this all sounds like the company is going in the right direction and it could potentially be an attractive tenant for landlords seeking to fill big spaces vacated by department stores on the UK high street. I've said this before but given the rate of retail space closures and the prospect of more closures and not less I would have thought that IKEA would be able to get new premises at decent rents given that it's a buyer's market at the moment. Also, landlords will probably be falling over themselves to welcome a company that is likely to generate a lot of foot traffic. Maybe IKEA could potentially pay them in meatballs. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention today was Foxconn. Basically, the Taiwanese iPhone assembler said that it was going to cut billions of pounds in costs and cut thousands of workers as the global smartphone slowdown continues. Foxconn, aka Hon Hai Precision, employs 800,000 workers in Taiwan and China, but it said that it was going to cut the numbers of non-technical staff by 10%. This is the latest bit of news from an iPhone supplier that feels it has to hunker down for the smartphone slowdown and does not bode particularly well as suppliers' fortunes tend to be a leading indicator of the health of Apple itself. Given that Apple has stopped publishing data on its unit sales, I suspect its supplies will be under even more scrutiny than they were before as to any indications they can give on order flow. You can get more detail on these stories and more in my, week, uh, my daily weekday blog on watsonsdaily.com. For instance, in today's edition, I talk about Defiant Italians, Market and Oil Price Recovery, Kingfisher's Focus, Amazon's Data Breach and Johnson Massey's str uh, Strong Showing. Anyway, Watson's Daily is intended to give you the essence of the day's commercial news with opinion. You can read the whole thing in anything between one and seven minutes. So please go to watsonsdaily.com to find out more if you're interested. See you tomorrow and thanks for watching. Watson, out.